Let's stop clowning around, shall we? Before this killer clown epidemic started getting the headlines, you may or may not have seen, depending on how observant and how regularly you read the tabloids, you may have seen occasionally on the front page, occasionally just a column hidden somewhere. Around the world, there have been multiple sightings of giant super rats <coughs> infesting homes, infesting cities, infesting subways. These rats, instead of being the usual size, uh, they can be 16 to 24 inches long in body plus the tail. These rats can be the size of cats and there are hundreds of them, hundreds. There are reports from all around the world of these rats being seen, these rats feasting upon other rats, these rats being infested with parasites and disease and going crazy with hunger and starting to eat corpses through the eye sockets at first, working and tunnelling their way through the bodies. There was a, an article in the Huffington Post not too long ago where in the hospital rats had been devouring corpses from the inside out by crawling through the anus of the corpse and chomping their way through. It's scary stuff and it's eerily regular. There are so many of these stories that you may have forgotten about being released over the last couple of years that it reminded me of the book written by James Herbert called The Rats. Now, The Rats is a apocalyptic tale of a city in England being overrun by these killer mutant rats. And every time I think of these stories that I see in the newspaper, this this book basically springs right back to mind. It's an absolute classic by James Herbert. And in 1985, there was a video game adaptation of The Rats. It had spawned movies, including Deadly Eyes, which is famous, also known as The Rats in some countries, but over here it was released as Deadly Eyes. It was renowned for its cheap special effects where dachshunds were dressed up as rats and let loose in the streets. Um, it never quite did the concept justice, I feel, and the remake in 2002, again, didn't quite cut the mustard. But... A recent documentary by Morgan Spurlock just shows the extent of rat infestations around the planet. Uh, Morgan Spurlock travelled around the globe and some of these stories that he has heard firsthand are quite frightening. And again, it brought me back to the rats. And the video game of the rats is what we're going to cover in 2016. This is the Halloween special and we are going to cover the rats. So what makes The Rats special? The Rats is kind of a very interesting video game indeed. It was it was actually quite critically acclaimed. It got five star ratings, four star ratings, but it seemed to have been forgotten in the sands of time as just, just ebbed away from people's memories. Uh, and I always found that quite strange because when I played it recently, it was so memorable. It was so eerie. It was so well designed that I just had to cover it in this video. So, without further ado, let's play The Rats. This is the ZX Spectrum version we're starting off with here. There is footage for the Commodore 64 and the Spectrum versions of this game in this video. There was going to be an Amstrad CPC version also, but that got cancelled at the last minute. It was only when the bones of the first devoured victims were discovered that the true nature and power of these swarming black creatures with their razor-sharp teeth and taste for human blood began to be realised by a panic-stricken city. For millions of years, man and rats had been natural enemies. But now, for the first time, Suddenly, shockingly, horribly, the balance of power had shifted. And here's where the first atmosphere from the game starts to drip through the screen. 
you see a flashlight covering the sewer some red eyes in the corner as the flashlight scours for something in the darkness before you know it POW what's supposed to be a scary rat jumps on the screen Ain't that creepy as all shit? Not a bad way to start a game, huh? Especially considering this was released in 1985. You know, that's, that's quite an atmospheric beginning for a machine with only 48k of memory. So, one of the downsides with this game is it has a multi-load system. It loads after each segment, which is a bit of a pain. It could be better, but, uh, eh, what you gonna do? One eternity later. And here we are on the main screen of the ZX Spectrum version of the rats. First thing you see in the game is a city overview of London where the rats are taking control. This is your main screen of the game. The rats is kind of a blend between a strategy game in real time and a real time text adventure. Yeah. A real-time text adventure so you've got resource management to do here you look for reports to see where the rats are heading to and every now and again you'll hear that siren which will take you in to control one of the characters of the game this is where the real-time texting comes in so you've you've seen your regular text adventure where you've got to look or go north or south or east or west look at items etc in the rats it's a very good user interface. It's got some very key uh, objectives that you have to do, and you have to do them quick because you hear that beep ticking off. The quicker that beep goes, the more chance you have of not making it out of this venture alive. Right. So you have characters that could be main characters of the game, um, which of which there are three or four main characters. If they die, it's game over entirely. It's finished, it's done for. But there are also tertiary characters and secondary characters which can either live or die, depending on how well you play. If you survive, you go back to this reporting screen, you look for further information about how the rats are moving, you use your research and development to find ways to defeat the rats. So you've got uh, resource management like police, firemen, you've got different weapons that you can use. So with your research and development, you've got four key areas. You've got the origin of the rats, the nature of the rats, defense against the rats, and how to fight them with offense. And you can allocate resources between these four different key areas. Now these white dots you see on the map, that's the last reported sightings of the enemy rats. You can deploy enemies. Uh, you can deploy, sorry, fire engines, policemen, um, you know, and and traffic control to to escort civilians away from rat infested areas. Uh, you you can you can kit them out with with certain uh, utilities, which can be improved as time goes on. And you can help usher the rats away from the main city. The question is, can you stop the rats from leaving the area? If the rats make it to the end of the map in any direction, it's game over. If the rats make it to your research station, it's game over. It's very tense indeed. Um, even though, as you can tell, there isn't much in the way of music or sound effects, it's still dripping and oozing with atmosphere. It's extremely tense and it's extremely engrossing. So you can see here, I'm just working on my research. I'm assigning it to try and block the rats from moving east towards my research station. I'm reading the reports. So you can see a horde of monsters have been reported in that area. So 
I'm going to send some reinforcements there. Enemies, um, the the rats have have taken some casualties, but the humans have as well. You you get reports such as like, uh, you know, whether your enemies have overrun you, whether you're able to push back the rats, and so on and so forth. Okay, you hear that alarm? That's going to take us to one of our action text sequences. This is a secondary character, Paula Blakely, with a tertiary character next to her. This game is brutal when it comes to handling secondary and tertiary characters. Just like that, a rat rips through the page to really bring home the idea of this person being ripped to shreds by a giant rat. You see the screaming face, you see the giant rat coming at you, and then black. Now let's switch to the Commodore 64 version. And immediately, you can hear there's a little more richness to the audio. Other than that, the game is very similar, including its brutality towards secondary characters, like this Tony, an eight-year-old boy. Now I'm going to sit back and just let you watch the text. Yeah, let that just sink in for a second. You just saw firsthand as part of the game's story an eight-year-old boy being eaten alive by a fucking rat. How incredible is that? You would never get away with something like that in a game nowadays. Not in a million years. And it gets worse. It's not only a boy of eight. In one part of the game, there's a baby that you have to save the life of and you can fail the rats can eat the baby and its mother alive it's just totally visceral it's totally brutal and that makes it even more shocking when it happens it, it sticks to the source material far closer than the movies did um, it sticks to it uh, incredibly and I think it could get away with it only then because the BBFC didn't classify games at this point when this game was released otherwise there'd be no way they'd sell this game to, to kids Anyhow, I digress. You make your way through the story, making sure that the key characters stay alive, including our buddy here, Henry, the shopkeeper. Um, this particular section of the game really shows off some of the intelligence behind the, the visual cues in the text. It really gives you an impression that there are a multitude of rats just trying to barge through the door at any moment. When, when you watch it, I don't know if it comes across, but when you play it, the feeling of intensity is is tangible. It's you you feel tense playing this game as you scramble for the correct text responses, and in areas like this where the rats are flooding the room, you have no text response. You just have to sit and wait and bide your time, and it's nerve wracking. 
like no other game in 1985, 1986 was. This was truly a game out of its own, with its own unique visual style, its own unique gameplay elements at the time. It's just a fantastic game. But let's just watch this situation unfold. See that you see the way the text is manipulated as it says the rats are gnawing through the door it's like the rats are gnawing through the screen to get to you and it's such a clever effect let's watch and continue Is that intense or what? And basically this game goes through these areas like this again and again. You can learn them through repetition, you can learn the correct responses, and eventually you'll make it to the end of the game. The end of the game basically leads you to the main big rat, the first mutant rat that started all the horror, um, started the enjoyment of flesh. It's this white two-headed rat and you give it the business end of your club now as the screen says victory is ours we win or did we well the short answer to that is we won the battle but we didn't win the war so in james herbert's rats trilogy the second book entitled lair is set five years after the rats was uh, basically, the rats have found their lair, they went into hiding, the mutant rodent, it turns out there was more than one of them, and they learn through rapid intelligence, um, the vermin have overtaken Epping Forest, which is 6,000 acres of woodland just outside London, um, and they they've they've kind of learned how to fight better, they, they hide themselves after an attack. Um, Many people, according to the books, were not aware that the 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 rats have still existed. So they they kind of ignored reports of these giant rats still being alive. It's very similar in a way to uh, Jaws, where where the the main protagonists are trying to convince the authorities that there is a problem, but nobody listens. Um, it's it's more of the same compared to the first book. But it's also kind of less of the same. It's it's not the greatest book in the world. Um, there is a nice bit with a troop of Boy Scouts though, um, and a squad of soldiers. Uh, but basically, it's 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 not good good video game fodder. So quite rightly, there was no video game released for the lair, um, and it certainly didn't help that the rats, as I said 
even though it got critical acclaim when it was first released, it didn't actually set the world on fire in terms of sales. It flopped miserably. So, no immediate video game sequel to The Rats ever came out. There was, as far as I'm aware, no Lair video game. However, there was a video game based on the third book, Domain. Domain is undoubtedly the darkest horror story that James Herbert has made. It's definitely the darkest and my personal favourite of the Rats trilogy. Um, it starts off at the dawn of a nuclear war, and things just get worse from there, really. Not only do they have the aftermath of a nuclear fallout to contend with, they also have the killer rats emerging from their lair for the first time ever in this generation. Plus, rabid dogs and surface dwellers that have been mutated and affected by the fallout means that this small handful, this small group of survivors, gets smaller and smaller and smaller very quickly. And very violently. Just to give you an idea, check out this excerpt from the book. Where to go? Where to run to? Oh shit, nobody thought it would ever happen. Nobody ever really took it seriously. Everyone knew we were on the brink, but nobody considered it would really happen. It had to be a false alarm. Had to be. Uh, leave the money on the counter, he called back to the motorist, who had left his car and was holding the pump nozzle, studying it as though not sure of its function. The motorist seemed to have found how to work the pump. Howard cursed himself for having wasted time emptying the till. Edie was always calling him tight bloody fisted. Maybe she was right. He should have been tucked away in some nice little basement by now. Still, it could be a false alarm. Nothing had happened yet. Yeah, that was it, he reassured himself. They'd made a mistake, bloody idiots. If anything was going to happen, it would have before now. He checked his watch and shook it. Couldn't have stopped, could it? Seemed a long time since the sirens had started. He grinned. What a mug. He'd acted like everyone else, running, panicking, telling God he was sorry. He tried to chuckle, but it came out as a choking sound. Well, I'll tell you what, matey, you're going to pay for that petrol. Howard began to walk back towards his garage, his little empire, shaking his head in resigned bemusement at the people rushing by. His two attendants, who had fled without his authority as soon as they'd heard the sirens, were in for a rollicking when they returned. He could just see their sheep's faces now. The motorist was climbing back into his car. Hold up, chief, Howard called. You owe me. The blinding flash stopped his words. His legs felt suddenly weak and his bowels very watery. Oh, no. He began to moan as he realised it actually was the real thing. There had been no mistake. Then he, his garage and the motorist were scorched by the heat. The petrol tanks, even though they were below street level, blew instantly, and Howard's and the motorists' bodies, as well as the bodies of everyone around them, were seared to the bones. And even those hurled through the air began to burn. Yeah, it's pretty intense stuff. So, enough about the book, enough about the, the trilogy, let's focus on the game itself. So, this game was apparently released in 1988 by Alternative Software. Now, I say apparently because there is so little information out there on the web, I'm not even certain it got actually released in retail stores. Um, I've done a bit of research on it. The game is not in the old school emulation centered database. It's not available on YouTube with the exception of one other video, which, um, which I noticed. Um, and the only reason I saw it, it was because it was on Game Base 64. And Game Base 64 has lots of unnamed files. And I just picked it up by chance from there, really. Um, I've got no documentation with this game. I've got no information whatsoever. I don't know who programmed it. I don't know who made it. I don't know who made the music. I don't even know what the idea of the game is. From what I can tell, it starts where the bombs drop and you play as one of the main characters from the book and you have to defeat the rats, get past the dogs and the, the marauding people that are affected by, by nuclear fallout, make your way through a ravaged city of London and survive. Um, how you do that is rather than using the rats' strategical systems and real action 
text adventure. It's just a good old fashioned action adventure with big chunky visuals and a repeating soundtrack over and over again, blurring in your ears. Um, the game itself is not amazing, to be honest with you, but it is an extremely interesting curio. Um, finding a game like this with absolutely zero information about it, based on a license, is quite frankly unheard of. Um, and it, it astonishes me. I don't know whether it was um, was scheduled to be released on ZX Spectrum even. It's just this one disc, that's all I have. Um, as you can tell from the gameplay, as I say, big chunky graphics. Um, it's extremely difficult, there are no instructions, you just have to figure it out as you go along. So you have a four item inventory, um, you have to juggle health, your torch, uh, ammunition and keys and things to help you progress further in the adventure. And you have to do this all the while while avoiding the rats. You can't jump over them, there is no jump button. So you either have to run through them and take damage, or shoot them. Um, so ammo management becomes an integral part of the experience. Uh, you, you not only have to manage your inventory, but you have to decide which enemies to shoot and when to shoot them. Uh, this will come with trial and error. The more you play, the more you know the routes, and the more you know that you're going to have to take out rats in certain areas to help you get along. Um, it's quite visually pleasing, although, as I say, I don't have much to say about it. It's just there. It's just fascinating to me that nobody really knows anything about this game whatsoever. It's not even listed on Alternative Software's website. And they have a 31 year old history of video games. And they focus primarily on budget titles back in the 80s. So we're not sure whether this was going to be released as a budget game I literally don't have anything um, if you have any information about this game or if you know somebody who does know anything about this maybe maybe you know the developer um, by off chance who knows I would be absolutely delighted to find any information that you can find out about this game as I say I've done my research on it looking through Google looking through retro video game sites, going through magazines, um, looking on YouTube, and as I say, I've only seen one other YouTube video covering this game, with the exception of this channel that you're watching right now. So, it is interesting. Much like Lair, the book, it seems to have just gone underground until it rears its ugly head again. Um, anyway, that's all I can say. I mean, you can see the footage for yourself. It looks fairly decent, the gameplay isn't great, but it certainly could have been released at that time. Um, and this concludes my retrospective on the rats and domain. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, I find these games really are underrated. I feel that the rats should be talked about more. It's a classic in my opinion of 80s video game history. Um, for 1985 it drips with atmosphere. It's a wonderful title and I really urge you to check it out. Domain, yes, it's an absolute curio that, that needs more information out there. Uh, more research needs to be made on this game. We need to find out who made it, why it didn't get to retail, if it didn't get to retail, and if it did get to retail then how come nobody knows anything about this? It's, it's an intriguing story, um, and it's one I would love to have any more information on. Anyway, I digress, I am rambling. This video has gone on for way too long as it is, because I wasn't sure how to wrap it up. But anyway, thank you for watching my Halloween special this year. I hope I've shed some light on two great games for you, and I'll see you soon. Bye.